this continues from the last um, piece, well, the last study in 100 Classical Studies. We looked at study 17 last time, which was to do with articulation and um, principally single tonguing and double tonguing. Um, this one is number 22, and it's by Garibaldi again. Garibaldi wrote a lot of studies for flute. Um, and this combines um, tonguing with slurring. Um, the main figure in this piece is... It's in 3-4. So you have two semiquavers slurred, followed by two tongue semiquavers, and then followed by an arpeggio and a downward scale. That seems to be the main structure of the phrasing in the piece. It's played fairly fast and delicately as well. Um, the key to this is concentration and listening very hard to what you're playing. Don't play these things fast to begin with. Begin slowly. And speed it up over a number of days, weeks even. It'll take time. The, pa the, the piece is a page long. Looks like that. All semiquavers, more or less. Um, again, here are the slurred semiquavers. Upward rising with an arpeggio and then a downward phrase. I'll play it. first two lines are in, are in E minor, followed by an abrupt modulation to the uh, relative major, to G major. The second half begins the same process, but everything is up an octave. Uh, keep the tongue short. And it's a good thing to accent the first of every group of four semiquavers. Just so you know where you are in the piece. Rhythmically, it'll keep everything intact, precise and regulated. The arpeggios and the downward phrase are to do with crescendoing and diminuendoing. Which is fairly obvious. A lot of music tends to do that. When it rises, you find a crescendo and when you when the piece descends or a phrase descends and you'll have a you'll have a corresponding diminuendo 
also that that study is fairly exhausting it it um it requires a lot of breathing in the right places i don't breathe too much in it I usually take the whole uh, a phrase completely in one breath. The second phrase, I, I split it up and took a breath halfway through the phrase, uh, simply because there is a tick there. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll follow that. There is a tick in brackets here, which means it's optional. Um, so if you come across those in, in 100 classical studies, then you'll know what they mean. And sometimes I disregard the breathing marks completely and just do my own thing, um, which is fine. Fingers close to keys. That's something beginner flautists find very difficult to do. Fingers tend to rise and... and all over the place really but it's just one of those things to expect when you when you're starting an instrument it's um and people often say relax it's very difficult to relax as well because you're tense you know i i understand that completely do your best with it it's it's a, that is a great study to play um and maybe work or maybe work on two or four lines a day and then build it up over the course of over the course of a week don't rush there's no rush you know as as jung used to say all haste is of the devil um so take your time with, with it and and learn it over a period of a month maybe uh, it, that's probably quite a good idea just watch the register because it starts low it starts low in the low register low e of course in the second half you're up the octave going right up to top E. Be careful of that. And it's the same during the last two phrases. So you're right up to top E on the last line and then it comes to ground gradually. Try and be as musical as you can with it. It's a study. Some, some studies are more musical than others. Remember, technical problems are wrapped up in studies. I think with that one, it's the, it's the slurring of the tonguing and also the, arpeggios, the arpeggios and the semi-chromatic descents. The... Not really chromatic, I suppose. It's, it's, a, it's a decorated E minor scale. But there are chromatic notes in there, and particularly during the last, during the second half. You know, things like that. So I hope you'll enjoy that study. Enjoy all the music you play. You know, don't make it a chore. Just enjoy it and, and do it for that reason. If you want to improve, it's the best way to be. Do something because you really like doing it and you will improve as a result. Okay. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.